Hello everyone, and welcome to the video tutorial series for Cesium for Unreal. Cesium for Unreal is a free and open source plugin that enables you to create applications with a accurate full-scale globe and stream terrain, imagery, photogrammetry, and 3D cities into Unreal Engine. We're really excited to share this plugin with you and look forward to seeing what you create. This video tutorial series will follow the written tutorials on the cesium.com website. If you're curious about any topics not yet covered in these videos, I would recommend checking out the written tutorials first because those are updated more frequently. In this first video, we'll be covering installing the plugin and creating your very first scene. Later videos will cover a diverse set of topics, including photogrammetry, player characters, including the third person character and vehicles, as well as building scenes with your own assets and actors on top of the Cesium datasets. To get started, the first thing you'll need is an installed version of Unreal Engine 4.26 or later. This is available for free download from the unrealengine.com website. Second, you'll need a Cesium Ion account. Cesium Ion is Cesium's cloud service for 3D geospatial content and content pipelines. Cesium Ion gives you access to a curated set of global content, including terrain, 3D cities, and photogrammetry. And you can also upload your own data. So if you have your own massive 3D datasets, you can upload them to Cesium Ion and they'll be streamed into your application at runtime rather than having to be packaged and shipped. In order to create a Cesium Ion account, you can click on the Try Cesium for Free button or go to cesium.com ion and fill out your account details here. I've already created an account, so I'll just sign in. And once we're logged in, we can take a quick look at the My Assets page. My Assets contains a list of assets associated with your account, including those created from custom data you may have uploaded, as well as ones added from the Asset Depot. The Asset Depot contains a curated list of free assets available for use in your applications. Now that that's done, let's go over to the Unreal Engine launcher to install the Cesium for Unreal application. Once we're inside the launcher, we'll click on the Marketplace tab and search for Cesium. There'll be two results that come up. We'll click on Cesium for Unreal. This is the plugin, and we can install it by clicking the Install to Engine button. I've already installed it, so it doesn't show up, but there should be a slot for your version of Unreal Engine. You can also take a quick look at the Cesium for Unreal samples, which contains a bunch of pre-built environments and levels for showcasing different features of Cesium for Unreal. We won't be referencing them in this tutorial series since we'll be creating each scene from scratch, but this is great for getting a quick overview of what you can do with Cesium for Unreal. Now that we have the plugin installed, let's open up Unreal Engine and create a new empty project. So we'll go over to games next and create a new blank template project. The other templates will work as well. We'll create a project with no starter content. Blueprint only is fine. And we can call it Cesium Tutorial. Once the project is loaded, we can delete everything from this default scene that shows up. And we can save the level as Cesium tutorial level. Once it's saved, we can set this map as the default for editor startup. So the next time we start up this project, it'll by default load this level instead of a new empty level. So we'll go over to project settings, then maps and modes, and then select Cesium tutorial level for both the editor startup map and the game default map. Next, we'll enable the Cesium for Unreal plugin by going to Settings and Plugins. In the Installed section, we'll go to Cesium for Unreal and click the Enabled checkbox. This may restart your editor. Once the editor is restarted, we'll add our first two actors to the scene. Let's go over to the Content Browser and go over to the View Options on the bottom right, and then make sure Show Engine Content is checked. 
we can flip open this navigation pane and scroll down to Cesium for Unreal. Let's add a floating pond and a Cesium Sun Sky to our scene. You can see that the lighting is pretty washed out in our scene. And this is because the Sun Sky system is a lot brighter than the default Unreal Engine lighting values in order to more accurately reflect daylight in the real world. To remedy this, we need to enable high dynamic range lighting. We'll go over to the project settings and search for luminance. And we'll want to check the box called extend default luminance range in auto exposure settings. This may also require an editor restart. Next, we can set our floating pawn to auto-possess the player on begin play. We can click on the floating pawn, and then in the details, search for possess. In the auto-possess player setting, we'll go over and select player zero. We're now ready to add cesium ion datasets to our scene. Let's go over to the top editor pane and select the cesium icon, and then click connect. This opens up a browser window, so our Unreal Engine application can be granted access to our Cesium Ion account. So we can click Allow, and then if we close this window, we'll see that the pane on the left-hand side has changed to give us a few options. The first option is Add. This opens up a Cesium Ion Assets pane on the bottom, which displays all the assets in our My Assets page you saw earlier. Next, the Upload button opens up a browser window to upload our own custom data into Cesium Ion. The Add Blank button creates a new Cesium 3D tileset actor in our scene, which we can modify to load data from a custom URL on your local computer or on a server. The Learn button opens up the Cesium documentation where you can find all the Cesium for Unreal tutorials on the left-hand side here. Lastly, the Help button opens up the Cesium community forums, where you can ask questions or post feedback or feature requests. We'll start by adding the Cesium World Terrain plus Bing Maps aerial imagery to our scene. This is a global terrain data set. You may see a black band near the horizon which we can fix by going over to Cesium Geo Reference, going to the Sun Sky variable, and selecting Cesium Sun Sky. We can also take a quick look at some of the other data sets available. So we have Bing Maps Aerial with Labels imagery, which we can add to our scene. And if we zoom out, we can see that it's similar, but just has geographic labels overlaid. Next, we have Bing Maps Road Imagery, which replaces the satellite imagery with a road map. We also have Sentinel-2 Imagery, which is simply an alternative satellite imagery source. And then finally, we have Cesium OSM Buildings, which we'll get to in just a moment. For now, let's go over back to Bing Maps Aerial Imagery. And then let's adjust the time zone settings. If you go over to Cesium Sun Sky, we can see that there's a time zone variable. Right now we're looking at the city of Denver, which is in Mountain Standard Time, which is GMT minus seven. Based on the month and day settings, daylight savings time will be automatically applied. So we don't need to adjust for that when setting time zone. Next, let's take a look at the solar time. This is in 24 hour time, and we can set the time to sunset, sunrise, or anything in between. Now let's try adding in 3D cities as another layer on top of the world terrain. Just like the cesium world terrain you see here, anyone with the cesium ion account has access to global 3D buildings as well. So we'll go over and click on Cesium OSM Buildings and click the plus button. OSM stands for OpenStreetMaps, which is where the building data is sourced from. 
If we fly closer to land, we can begin to see that the buildings have been loaded in. In order to change the camera speed, we can go over to the top right and then decrease or increase this value. You can also select the scaler, which will allow you to zip around the entire Earth. Finally, let's mix things up by jumping to another part of the world entirely. Let's try going to Chicago by changing the georeference location to a longitude of negative 87.6 and a latitude of 41.87, and a height of 2250. You can see that the editor camera jumps, but the floating pond maintains its previous location. So I want to reset that by clicking on this reset to default button here. Chicago runs on central standard time, so we'll also change the time zone over to minus six. And as you can see, we are now in the beautiful city of Chicago. That's it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be adding photogrammetry to our scene, replacing these white buildings with textured, realistic models. If you have any questions or feedback, hop over to the community forums with the help button. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll see you in the next video.